Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm presenting quite an interesting video as I was lucky enough to be able to get into contact with and interview the current number one Steel Ball Run player. Tom Host has over double the points of the next best player and will soon be gunning for the number one spot in other game modes. It's safe to say that Mr. Tom Host is a very good YBA competitive player and I'd first of all like to extend my thanks not only to Toxic High for organising this interview but of course for Tom Host for giving up his time to answer my questions. Without further ado, let's get into it. So first of all, I asked, what is your general recommended strategy for consistently winning SBR? Are there any particular methods that you use? Tom answered that, quote, It depends on your team size. If you have a team of four or less, it is more recommended to rush Devil's Palm as it is a good spot to camp and set up a wipe, especially if you have to fight a bigger team. However, if you're a team of five or more, you can simply wipe at the start. I always go for a wipe even as a team of two, end quote. So from this, we can take that the top players generally prefer to go straight into the PvP rather than focusing on surviving like many newer players do. It's actually interesting that he says he would try to wipe even as a duo because that can definitely be harder against bigger teams. So in response to that, I asked what he uses to achieve this. The next question was... What stands and specs do you use or recommend when attempting an SBR wipe? Do you change up the composition of stands or specs that you use based on the size of your team? Tom responded, quote, My team usually just uses what they like, but I like to use the World Alternate Universe because it is great for surviving, chasing players, and dealing quick, large amounts of damage. For specs, I would say use whatever works best with your stand. And this is definitely something that I can agree with. The World Alternate Universe has the unblockable knives, a gun, and of course a time skip. It can easily catch up to runners and escape if it needs to. I then asked, what do you like to use for the World AU in that case? And Tom replied, quote, boxing. If I had to pick something truly special about the World AU, which makes it stand apart from every other stand for SBR, it would be the smoke grenades. Smoke grenades are a great AOE move against teams with low cooldowns. You can pose in them to hide for health, you can place them at stage 4 barrier to knock people off their horses, or at the Devil's Palm. They are generally great combo extenders, and they stand crash. They easily get people off their horses if used right. Everything in the World AU's moveset is extremely useful." End quote. I really like this response because I think it shines a really good light on how the top players think. It's about sometimes using your mind over your mechanics, about how you use your moves, how, when you use them. Using smoke bombs like this in SBR is very genius in my opinion, especially as it's such a low cooldown. This definitely shows insight, especially as to how he deals with other teams, so take notes viewers, take notes. So given that, my next question was, what stands do you have the most trouble with in SBR, or is it down usually to the skill of the enemy player? Tom replied simply, quote, Mostly due to the skill of the player, but the stands I tend to target are Sex Pistols, Made in Heaven, and the World Over Heaven, since they have very high damage combos that are easy to hit and are the biggest threat to my team, end quote. As you can see here, I replied that I hard agreed with Sex Pistols being targeted as it is a monster in Steel Ball Run, and Tom simply said that, quote, if you get hit by a multi-shot and his team just does M1s on you, you can die in like 3 seconds, end quote. And he's telling the absolute truth here, especially if a Six Pistols is teamed with a The Hand, it's practically a guaranteed death. So after that, my next question was, how many wins did it take to reach number one? And his response was simply, quote, around 70 wins to get the amount of points that I have, but on the first day it took around 30 wins, end quote. I said to him that on behalf of all viewers, I can probably say just, wow, that's dedication. Um, following from that, I asked, how much time do you spend a day on SBR? Alternatively, how much time did you spend at first when you were grinding for the number one spot? Tom Host stated that, quote, The first day I spent around 11 hours and the next two days I spent around 9 hours on each day, end quote. I was a bit confused at first, so I asked if it took around 3 days roughly to reach number 1, but he clarified that it was actually just the first day that it took to reach number 1, and everything after that is extra grinding to get more points and solidify his spot. And I just have to say, I, mad respect for that grind, I have absolutely no idea how Tom found the free time to do that, but I'm a boomer, so uh, what do I know, eh? I asked another PvP-centric question next, which was, do you have any general tips for players and teams that want to consistently win SBR? What separates teams that always win from teams who just suck? Tom Host here actually confirmed one of my long-term strategies in response, which was 
quote, Communication and strategy is always helpful, but I think at the end of the day, it comes to individual skill. If I was to give one strategy, target a single player on a team, taking them out one by one, end quote. Whittling down numbers by targeting one player at a time is a really good strategy and it's one of the ones that I always like to use in my matches of Steel Ball Run, as targeting them is just a very quick way to weaken an enemy team's numbers. So next I asked, do you play the other game modes, 1v1s for example? And this was a pretty quick, simple answer. Yes, Tom shared that in April he was number one in 2v2s as well as having the highest recorded number of points in that game mode to this day. That's obviously incredible, so mad respect for getting to number one in not one but two game modes. To go beyond that, Tom also shared that he is planning to get to number one in 1v1's leaderboard in the coming months soon as well, so watch out for him, it's safe to say he is definitely a very top player at this point. Next I asked another PvP question which was, how do you deal with 3v1s, 5v1s etc? Do you have any strategies for winning or surviving against teams when by yourself? Tom's response was, quote, If I'm stuck in a situation where I'm being targeted and my teammates are alive, I will just try to run and buy time until they have wiped them. If I'm on my own dealing with teams, I tend to let them just run into my attacks and will have to do a lot of running. Most of the time in those situations you are going to lose because if you get hit by one stand barrage, they can just do clicks on you and kill you very quickly. To avoid this, area of effect attacks and attacks with no end lag are great, but the best strategy is to run and just try and steal the win." End quote. The response honestly speaks for itself. Tom definitely has the in-game knowledge to play the mind games and manipulate his opponents into giving him the best chance of survival. My final question to Tom Host had a very interesting response. I asked, do you think leaderboard players should be rewarded for reaching the top, and if so, what rewards do you think would be appropriate? Tom replied, quote, I think leaderboard players should be rewarded, but the reward should be access to a chat in the YBA Discord server with Moz and Uzu to discuss balance changes and other ideas for the YBA PvP competitive aspect, because at the moment I think the game has become extremely unbalanced from what it used to be, as the dev team only has the information of the polls they put in. It's no one's fault but a lack of communication." End quote. Honestly, I had never considered something like this, but I think it's actually a very interesting proposition. If anyone is going to know the true balance of the game and the proper usages and balance of each stand, it is absolutely going to be the very top players. I think something like this could do wonders for the game's balance issues if the moderators agree it would be something at least interesting to try. And that brings us to the end of the interview. I'd like to thank Tom Host once more for his time. It was really cool talking to you and really cool to get these kind of insights. I'd love to play with you sometime. And again, thank you to Toxikai for your help. And of course, Tank Flatter for helping with the thumbnail. And to top it off, thank you for watching. If you would like to see more of this type of content, do consider subscribing as it tells me what I'm creating is the right type of content. Also comment down below anything that you might like to see next time. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.